Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. Have you ever needed a box in a hurry? Stay tuned. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by and welcome to all of my new subscribers. Thank you so much for choosing to join my amazing online crafting family. Thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or is supporting my monthly members group. Thank you guys so very much. Have you ever needed a box in a hurry? You wanted it to look very special, but you weren't quite sure how to do it. Well, today I'm going to show you exactly how to do it because I personally need a box in a hurry. So I'm going to take you along with me as we make this very quick box. And here is the box that we're going to be making. It's a four by four by four box with a nice deep lid on it. And we're going to be using some really beautiful paper to make this box. But what really is going to add to the beauty of this box is how we're going to decorate it all around as well as in the front. So y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. All right guys, so here's today's project. It is a beautiful four by four by four box. For the box itself, it's just going to be a very basic box that we can make in a hurry. And you can see how nice and snug this lid fits. So here is what we're going to be using to make it. I have these laser cut words from the Dollar Tree from the Crafters Square collection. These say hugs. They have them in several different words and it's three in a pack. So three for a dollar, very good deal. Then I'm using these wall stencils that I also got at the Dollar Tree. And I'm basically going to peel one off and use it as the main focal point for the outside of the box. And you get six of these for a dollar. And then I'm going to be using this gorgeous paper from Prima. You can see how pretty it is on this side and it's also beautiful on this side. So it's the pink polka dots that I actually want. And this paper is from Prima. It's from the Frank Garcia with Love Collection. And this page is titled True Friendship. The SKU is 55350 and the Prima item number is 996192. So before we make the box, I am going to go ahead and just take my hugs and I want to add just a little bit of paint. So I have some paint on my foam brush and I'm going to go ahead and paint this because I want it to be dry by the time we get ready to put it on. And you know what I should have done to this? I should have added some of my repositionable tape to the back and stuck this down so that it wouldn't keep moving. Next time I will. Okay, so we have our hugs painted. I'll set it to the side. It'll be dry by the time we need it. So I've brought in my trimmer. I'm going to take one of my 12 by 12 inch pieces and trim it to a true 12 by 12 by removing this piece. Now the second piece that we're going to need, we are going to trim it to 11 and 1 8 by 11 and 1 8 So we're going to start with two pieces of 12 by 12. We'll leave one at 12 by 12 and we'll trim the second one to 11 and 1 8 by 11 and 1 8 So we're going to take our piece that measures 12 by 12. We're going to score this at half an inch and at four. So that's half an inch and at four. half an inch and at four. Half an inch and at four. So this is going to be the base. The 12 by 12 inch piece is your base. 
Then we're going to take the 11 and 1 8 by 11 and 1 8 inch piece, which is going to be our lid, and we're going to score it at one and at three and a half on all four sides. So that's one and three and a half. One and three and a half. So then I'm going to take my big old spatula and I'm going to fold and burnish my scores on both pieces so that we can go ahead and get that part out of the way. And we'll do the base now. So I think I might have given you guys the wrong measurements for this box. When finished, it is actually three and a half by four by four. All right, so now that we have all of our scores folded and burnished, we are going to remove the three corner pieces from all four sides of both pieces. So I'll bring in my finger blade and I'll go up to the score mark and drag straight down. And I went up to the second score mark. Then I'll angle in here just a little bit and then I'll angle here, angle here, and we've now removed those two pieces. And then I'll cut here and shorten this and we've removed that third piece. So that is what we do on all four sides of this. So we go up to the second score mark and drag straight down. We have now freed that. Then I'm going to angle in here, angle here, angle, removing those two corner pieces. And now I'll cut here and reduce. All four sides, we do this. Okay, so once you have freed all of your tabs, you'll notice that on these two ends here, these pieces are slightly angled. We want to go ahead and angle these end pieces as well. I angle my end pieces because it makes it easier to fold the box. So when I'm folding it like this, because I've angled in here, if I have cut too long, I don't have to worry about this going down and maybe sticking up on this end. So that's the reason why I angle, because I have better control of being able to close the box into a square the way that I want it. So I am going to take this one, set it to the side, and we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with the lid. So let's go up to the second score mark, drag straight down, angle, 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 removing those two pieces, cut here, removing this piece. So let's do it over here. Go up to that second score mark, drag straight down, angle, 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 and reduce. So I'll do one more because I want to demonstrate the finger blade technique. A lot of you comment on how straight I'm able to cut with the finger blade and that's for two reasons. The first reason is I've been using this blade for over 15 years so I have become very proficient with it. The second reason is because of how I hold it and how I guide it. So you can see that I have my pointed finger on top of the metal barrel and the blade is facing that way. My thumb is right there. My middle finger is bent. And so I'm using my middle finger and my thumb to stabilize the blade itself. But then I use my ring finger and my little finger to be able to guide it. So these two are always going to drag the paper as I'm coming down. So see if I can turn it this way so that you can watch these two fingers. When I place it down, they're dragging and that keeps my hand nice and steady. So I'll angle in and I'll try to position it again so that you can see hopefully the two end fingers. Angle in here, angle here and reduce. 
So hopefully that will help some of you who have a finger blade and you're not getting the straight cuts that you want. Make sure that you have it in your hand like this and that you're using these two fingers as your stabilizers and your guide when you're driving the blade down. I know a lot of you are holding the blade like this without having your finger come through. You can do that, but you're losing some of that control. So to answer the question of how I get such straight cuts, that's how I do it. So we're going to go ahead and cut this final one. I'll angle here, angle, angle, and reduce. Now, just like on the first piece, we have these angled pieces here. We're going to go ahead and do the same here. So all four of those outer flaps will have an angle to them. And so now we'll put our box together. You can tell that one is larger than the other. The larger piece is the base. Now, when I'm putting a box together, I like to use glue because I like the permanence that I get with the glue, the nice stick that I'm going to get with the glue. So I'm going to go ahead and just place glue on these two pieces, bring them up, and I want my corners to be nice and crisp. And I want to make sure that the score mark here is aligned as I come around the corner. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side. We want nice, tight corners. So you don't want to have any piece of that jutting out or sticking up. So now I'll use my big old spatula to go on the inside, get that stuck. We can do the same thing over here. I'm going to take my glue and I am going to place my glue down and I'll take this one. And this time I'm going to use my baby spatula to go on the inside get everything nice and stuck. Now I'll fold these flaps back. And I like to use the outer flaps on my boxes because it gives it a nice finish look to the top. So I've placed my glue. I'll just fold all of these over. And then I'll go in with my baby spatula and make sure they're all nice and stuck. And so there, now I have my nice three and a half by four by four inch box, and it is super, super cute. So now we're going to make the lid, do it the same way. We're going to take that glue, place some glue on our lid. We'll bring up the side, just like we did on the box bottom. And I'll bring up this side. And I'm going to use my baby spatula on the inside. Do the same thing over here. And for those of you who are new to paper crafting, watch some of my box videos and make boxes. That is the quickest way to get better at paper crafting making boxes is what I would recommend. So let's go ahead and fold that in. And again, we'll fold the outer flaps out. I'm going to take our glue, place some glue, And we're going to fold these over and we'll get them stuck. Use my baby spatula to go on the inside. And now we have our lid. Moment of truth time. We can take our lid, put it on our box, and we should have a very snug fit. That's exactly what you want. If when you make your box, 
your box is bowing in like this, that is because your lid is too tight and it doesn't fit your box properly. When you're putting that lid on, it should slide on, but it should slide on nice and snug like this. So we have a good fitting lid. So here's how I'm going to decorate. I am going to remove the lid because I want to take one of these flowers and we're going to place the flower down. So I think I'm just going to take this one. They are slightly different, not a very big difference, but they are each a little bit different in how they're cut. Then I want a lot of this flower on the front like that. And then I'm just going to fold it over the top to get it down. Now I can take this piece and just fold it. Then I can fold that back and over that. So that's how easy it is for us to use those Dollar Tree decals to decorate a box. And you can see how gorgeous that is. Now, if you want it to, and I might just do it on this one. Let me see. I was thinking about placing a flower so that a little bit would show here, but I like the look of this. So I'm just going to leave it alone. Now I'm going to bring in my hugs and I'm going to glue that down right there. I could run this through my Xyron sticker maker, but for those of you who don't have that sticker maker and you get these sweet little cutouts from the Dollar Tree or wherever you're able to find some wooden words, I know they have them at um, Hobby Lobby and Michael's as well. I'm just adding some glue and then we'll put this down. And we'll give that a chance to dry. And we will have our second beautiful box. So if you wanted to, you could actually build a little tower of these boxes using different phrases. So I could have used hugs, love, friend, are some of the ones that they have at the Dollar Tree. But I have hugs on both of these, which is more than fine with me. But you guys are able to see how quickly we can make a box using two pieces of 12 by 12, some stickers from the Dollar Tree or wherever you want to get stickers, and some wooden words that I got from the Dollar Tree or wherever you're able to find your wooden words. Now, for the base here, if you want to add a piece to the bottom to stabilize it, cut your piece at three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths and just place it in. You can use chipboard or you can add an additional piece of your heavyweight cardstock and that'll give you a nice firm base for what you would want to place in your box. So guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this quick and easy way to make a box. If you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.